So I've got a question for you. You know what? Bonus. I've got two questions for you. Question number one. How many pair of running shoes do you think the average one is? And question number two. How many pair of running shoes do you have? Hello everyone! Welcome to Running Otaku. I am the Running Otaku. And today we are going to talk about shoes. No, not going to do a shoe review for you. Instead, I want to talk about how many shoes you have and how many pairs of shoes is the right number for a runner. You know, I'm not a cyclist, but I hear in the cycling community there's a joke that goes something like this. What is the right number of bikes for a cyclist? And the answer is in plus one, which means always one more than what they have. So I think sometimes runners can get into that same mindset. And in fact, uh, ever since I started this channel, I've been watching lots of other running YouTubers and it's really interesting. A lot of them get deep into the woods on shoe reviews and they get very specific like, this shoe is my shoe for six to eight miles. This shoe is my shoe for slow tempo. This is my fast tempo shoe, right? I just don't know how they keep track. Uh, so let's talk about this a little bit. Oh yeah, before getting into things, just a quick note. So this channel is starting to grow a little bit. In fact, in the month of January, we increased the subscriber base by 50%, which is great. It's the law of small numbers. Anyways, we're at about 200 subscribers. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click the subscription button and be part of the community. Okay, so how many pairs of shoes is the right number of shoes? The answer is easy, right? I learned this in business school. You always answer by saying, it depends. And it's true, it depends on the runner. So I would say, you know, if you are maybe just starting out or you're running uh, and you're not super fast and you're really just focused on, let's say, a longer race, like a half marathon or full marathon, you know, I'd say one pair of shoes is enough. And these should be kind of durable, everyday training shoes, not too light, hopefully not too heavy with a good amount of cushioning. And most importantly, they feel comfortable for you because if you're gonna be on your feet you know, let's say, you know, two, three, four, maybe even more than four hours, um, comfort is probably the number one consideration. Okay, now let's say you're a runner who's really focused on, you know, some of the shorter road races, maybe a 5K or an 8K or a 10K. Then you might start considering a second pair of shoes. And these would be shoes that you would use for your, you know, your fast training days when you do your tempo runs or when you go to the track and do the track workout and for the races. I mean, Absolutely, you can still use your everyday trainers for that uh, and that's fine in most cases. But if you're really trying to eke out those last few seconds, a lighter shoe might save you just a little bit at the finish line. And so what about trail shoes? Well, that depends too. I mean, before I moved here to Portland, I was when I last lived in the United States, I was living in Los Angeles and I did some trail running there, but the trails were always pretty smoothed out, even if they were single track. Uh, and it didn't rain much, so they were pretty dry. So traction wasn't an issue. And just using my everyday road trainers was more than adequate for those situations. So if you find yourself in that situation where you're not on really uh, kind of scary trails uh, and the footing's not too bad, then by all means, just use your road training shoes. However, if you're in the situation where, you know, you're doing a lot of really technical trails or climbing up mountains or you've got a lot of rocks or there's a lot of wet, whether it's snow or rain or mud, then of course, uh, specialized trail shoes are in order in that case. Okay, there's another instance where you might need a different pair of shoes. And that's if you're really racing a half marathon or a marathon. You know, I'm not talking about just getting to the finish and being happy, but you know, really going after that time and really specializing your training for that. Well, in those situations, there's another type of shoe that makes sense. And these are what I would say are racing flats, you know, but long distance. So they're not as flimsy or, or small or thin as the uh, 5K shoes, but they're definitely much lighter and more responsive than your everyday trainers. So for those of you that are really going after, you know, maybe it's two and a half hour marathon, or maybe it's an hour and a half, uh, half marathon. In those situations, I think it does make sense to go ahead and get some long distance racing flats. And then finally, if you are in school or you are a master's runner and you're competing in cross country or uh, you're doing a lot of track races, maybe some all comers meets, then you might need one or two other pair of shoes, right? So if you're doing cross country, 
in many cases, you'll want a cross-country racing spike. Now, for me, when I was in high school running cross-country in California, they didn't allow uh, cross-country spikes, so we just ran in our racing flats, uh, and the traction was good enough where it wasn't a problem. But if you're running in deep mud or you know really sticky stuff or, uh, or uh, grass even that's thick, um, then the racing spikes can give you a lot of traction. Likewise, if you're racing on the track and you're doing anything less than a 10K uh, or you're doing a lot of track workouts uh, for an upcoming event, then uh, track spikes make sense too. Now, I wouldn't use track spikes if you're doing a track workout for you know a road race, but if you're training for, let's say, a 400 meter or an 800 meter or 1500 meter, then of course, uh, track spikes uh, make a lot of sense. But for you, you guys out there that are a little bit older like me, be careful with those. Uh, you can get injured, uh, so ease into them uh, because uh, your calves will definitely thank you later. Okay, so all that said, so what does the running otaku have? How many pairs do I have? Well, let me show you. So this is pair number one. Well, it's only one, but I have two, of course. And this is the Skechers Go Run Ride 7s. Um, these are my everyday training shoes. So right now I'm running 10 times a week. So seven days and three of those days I'm doing doubles. And for eight, well, seven or eight of those 10 runs, I'm using this shoe. It's fairly light. It's uh, about eight or so ounces, which is this many grams. Um, so you can see it's got a ton of cushioning uh, and it's super flexible, which I like, um, and very, very comfortable, which for me is the most important thing. So when I'm doing kind of the bulk of my mileage where I'm not really caring that much about pace uh, or power or any of that kind of stuff, this is the shoe I use. Okay, so the next pair of shoes I have are these guys. Um, they're also from Skechers. No, I'm not sponsored by Skechers and a little bit of coincidence that I have two pairs of Skechers. I probably will have different pairs of shoes in a few months, but anyways, um, these are the Razor 3s and they're uh, kind of a road racing uh, flat and kind of speed uh, training shoe. Um, they're very comfortable. I like them a lot for anything shorter than about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. When I notice when I wear these for longer than that, uh, I start wishing that I had something a little bit more substantial. Um, but for the two days a week for my short tempo stuff, which can be anything from, you know, 20 seconds up to, let's say four minutes or my longer tempo stuff, which could be, you know, 30, 40 minutes plus. Um, these are the shoes that I train in. Also for racing. So, uh, all of my road races, uh, half marathon or under, um, are, I'm using these shoes as well. So for the longest time, I really only had one or two pairs of shoes in my stable. Uh, but now that I live in Portland, I actually have a third pair. And right now I'm using <laughs> these big gray monsters, right? These are the Hoka Speed Goat 2s. Um, they've got an incredible amount of cushioning, but they're actually pretty light. I think they're right around 10 ounces, which is this many grams. And um, I use them on the trails. Now in Portland, uh, we actually do have a lot of forest trails here um, and they're not very steep. They're just undulating um, and they're not very technical either. The problem is that it rains a lot here, if you haven't heard, in the Pacific Northwest. And so if I happen to be doing trails right after a heavy rain or after three or four or five days in a row of heavy rain, it can get a little bit slippery out there and uh, I have a tendency to fall. Um, and so that's when I bring these guys out. Um, in the summer months, totally don't need them. It, the trails are dry and I'm fine. But for about eight months out of the year, I'd say I probably use these once every week, maybe once every two weeks uh, for those trail runs that are done in the wet stuff. And then I have a bonus pair of shoes, right? Um, and it's these guys. For some of my uh, loyal followers, you might have, you might remember these. These are the Solomon Sense Rides, which I told you I returned. Uh, and I tried to return them, but turns out there's a funny thing with uh, Solomon's 30 day money back guarantee. They will take the shoes back absolutely as long as you haven't worn them running. And you saw me, I did a 30 minute run with them and I cut off the tags, so I can't return these guys. Um, so I'm trying to learn to live with them. I found some really thin socks, which helped because my problem was it was just too tight hair in the forefoot for me. Um, and so now this is my bonus pair of shoes, which I use 
for any trail run that's 40 minutes or less just so I can start breaking these guys in and um, I like them they have, they have they're more sure of foot than those hokas that I have so maybe I'll start using these in the future if I could break them in and get comfortable with them but anyways that's my stable of shoes okay one last uh, shoe related topic for today and that is when do you know when it's time to return the shoes the short answer for me is I really don't I mean common wisdom says that once you get to you know around 300 miles or 500 kilometers then it's time to return the shoes and I've seen a lot of uh, youtubers they, they start pressing here and it, they start seeing creases and they say well the crease is evidence that the midsole and the cushioning is shot or they'll look at the, the bottom of the shoe and there'll be substantial wear and they'll say okay now it's time or they'll look at the top of the shoe and there'll be holes or something um, I'm actually not that good I mean the only way I know for sure I need new shoes is if I start feeling like a lot of shock and a little bit of soreness after I'm running that's not from the miles but it's it's from the pounding um, for example this shoe here um, I've got over 400 miles on it now and if you can see there's almost no sign of wear at all anywhere on top in fact there's there's nothing um, and on the outsole on the, the bottom of the shoe there's a little bit of wear you might be able to see right here but again not much and as far as creasing yeah I suppose like if I really press hard in here which, and I'm not very strong but maybe I can see some evidence of that but these still feel very comfortable to me uh, quite plush actually so I think what I will do is in the next uh, maybe 60 miles or 100 kilometers I probably will retire these because I don't want to find out too late that they are shot but for a lighter runner like me you know I'm about 63 kilograms maybe around 140 pounds uh, maybe some of you are much lighter than me but uh, I have a hard time wearing out the shoe and I just never know when it's time so that's something I'd love to hear from you when do you return or when do you retire your shoes and how do you know it's time okay so that's it for today thank you so much for watching and again let me know I'd love to hear from you how many pair of shoes do you have what kind of shoes do you have um, and what do you think is the appropriate number for a runner and also if you have any tips on when you know when it's time to replace your shoes I'd love to hear because uh, I honestly don't know so that's it for today uh, if you like what you saw go ahead click the like button if you really like what you saw then by all means click subscribe and the little bell next to it that way you'll be notified instantly every time I upload a new video uh, which is great because then you can follow me as I progress on my sub 3 Boston Marathon journey trying to set uh, a lifetime PR and go sub 3 for the first time on April 15th this year so that's it for today we'll see you all next time bye bye